Hello, hello, hello. I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that's been coming up a little bit more often in my live streams lately, and that is simply, should you build a 3D printer in 2025? Should you go self-source a kit or purchase a kit off the shelf from a manufacturer and build your own 3D printer, or should you just, you know, walk into a micro center, throw some bills on the counter and walk out with a perfectly functional Benchy maker? Well, we'll dive into that today, so let's get started. So first things first, why do I think this question is coming up a little bit more often now? And personally, as somebody who's been involved with 3D printing since about late 2017, who's involved with the Voron design team and who builds 3D printers quite regularly on this channel, I personally kind of think the heyday of kit 3D printers has passed. Uh, when I got into 3D printing late 2017, we were in what I like to call the era of the Ender. Ender 3 clones were everywhere. Pretty much the majority of consumer level 3D printers were V-wheel bed flingers of some sort. That was kind of the, the popular design at the time. Obviously there were others, you know, Prusa was around at the time and whatnot, and you could buy an Ultimaker. But the thing was, if you wanted a printer that was enclosed and capable of printing the higher end engineering materials, ASA, ABS, nylon, polycarbonate, etc. You kind of had to spend some money to get an off the shelf machine that was fully capable of printing that stuff. Because again, the Ender type printer was the most popular. And around when COVID happened, which we all remember that unfortunately, with all the lockdowns and everything, everyone was stuck inside. A lot of people had free time on their hands to design 3D printers and we had vacation budgets we couldn't spend on anything else and kits got really popular 2020 to 2022 period maybe a little bit before 2020 those were the heydays of kit building in my opinion it was a great time to get into building 3d printers with kits before the dark times before the fire nation attacked and by dark times and Fire Nation attacking, I mean, Bamboo Lab came out with the X1 and the P1 series of printers, which were pretty economical and closed core XY machines that just did what you tell them to do and they came out of the box ready to go. So um, that kind of put an end to the, if you need a 3D printer to do this, well, there's not many options out there to buy. I guess you're building a kit. Now you could just buy it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's just dive into what I was just talking about a little bit more. There was a period where if you wanted a machine that could print those higher end materials and was enclosed, there weren't really a lot of off the shelf options. You pretty much either had to spend a bit more money or you could buy a kit and build a printer that would do what you wanted to do. And usually that was a more economical option. Uh, at the time, a good Voron V2.4 kit would run you about $1,000 US, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on where you source parts from. But you could build a Voron a lot cheaper than an Ultimaker and it would perform better than an Ultimaker most people's opinion. There wasn't that off the shelf option. And there were people that wanted the machine and they didn't really care how they got the machine. They were willing to build it if they had to, they were willing to buy it if they wanted to, but there wasn't really a lot of options for buying it. So they were building it. But now with Bamboo and now other companies like the Elegoo Centauri Carbon 3D printer, the Flash Forge Adventurer, you can buy enclosed Core XY machines that are pretty dang good and you can get them a heck of a lot cheaper than even a couple years ago. So that segment of the market that was willing to build the machine because they couldn't just buy it, they've kind of just moved to just buying the printer. It is what it is. The market is the market. Demands are what they are. So the question is, when you can just go buy a machine off the shelf, why should you even bother building a kit 3D printer anymore? So let's go dive into the pros and cons. So let's start with the pros because everyone likes the pros. The good, good news first. So the good news is when you build your own 3D printer from a kit uh, or self-sourcing, you have full control over the type of machine you're getting. Are you building a machine for a specific use case, higher temperature printing, printing a specific object? You, you run an Etsy store where you print 3D printed keyboard cases. Well, you probably don't need a machine with 600 millimeters of Z, but you know, a lot of XY space may be something you're into. So. When you are self-sourcing, yes, when you buy a kit, you get what's in the kit, but you also have that ability to customize your build, even more so if you go with a DIY printer or you self-source. Now, when it comes to self-sourcing 
or purchasing an off-the-shelf kit. Nowadays, I just recommend buying off-the-shelf kit for most people. Yes, self-sourcing, you do have a little bit more control over what you're getting in the kit, but DIY kits, they're not really worth it anymore, especially with tariffs and shipping costs and taxes and duties. It's it's one of those buy once, cry once kind of things. And also kits have gotten really good. When Voron kits first started coming out, for example, some of these kits were so bad, they were shipping with components that weren't even compatible with a Voron. So for example, some kits had V-slot extrusion frames. You can't mount an MGN nine rail to a V-slot extrusion. It doesn't work that way. So kits have gotten a heck of a lot better. They're a lot better in quality. So if unless you really need anything really out there, I'd recommend sourcing a kit. And when it comes to what kits to get, personally, just kind of shop around and see what's popular. If you're especially new to building 3D printers, look for a kit from a well-known manufacturer. It's got good reviews. If you honestly want the easiest, best example of a good kit to get, if you are especially new to 3D printing, buy a Prusa kit. One, you save a bit of money on your Prusa buying a Core 1 kit versus buying a pre-assembled Core 1. You get a few days of build out of it. I really like building stuff. I am I just got into Gunpla. I like making the little Gundam action figures. It's fun. I have a good time doing that. Building stuff is fun to some people. Half the joy of 3D printers for me is building the 3D printer. So you save a bit of money, you have a couple days of fun building your kit, and now you know how the printer goes together. If something happens in the future, you gotta do maintenance, you know how it works. And if you wanna customize it along the way, cause you don't like the black or orange parts that come with the Prusa kit, well, you can print your parts in hot pink if you have the ability to do that. It's your machine, do what you want. Also, another thing with kits is things that probably would not be able to exist if they weren't a kit, can exist. So for example, we have the Rook here. This is a mostly 3D printed 3D printer. Uh, it's sold as a kit from a few different manufacturers. This is an LDO kit, I believe. And this kind of printer would not probably exist if it was being sold as a pre-assembled printer. Uh, the cost of the components doesn't make sense for the type of printer you're getting. But as a DIY kit, because a lot of DIY kits use off the shelf parts, you don't require that specialty manufacturing uh, molds, dyes, presses example to make components specifically for this. You can just, you know, source off the shelf bearings and rods and electronics and whatnot. So things that may not be able to exist otherwise are able to exist in this segment of the market because they are kits. The Positron, for example, a fun little collapsible printer that you build as a kit, that would be a very hard machine to sell as a pre-assembled unit. I'm sure there is some sort of demand in the market for that, but as a kit, it makes it a better option for those trying to sell it because you don't have to go through the whole step of building it. They're, the user's building it. You save quite a bit of money by just putting out the parts and having the end user build it, you're able to now sell something that may not exist on the market uh, as a fully assembled thing. And then we also have the Venture XL here, which is this massive 3D printer behind me here. Uh, we just finished printing this Dark Fortress of Baradur on here. If you've been following the shorts on the channel, you'll see it there, came out pretty good. Uh, but a large printer like this, again, trying to sell this as a pre-assembled thing, would be kind of hard. I'm sure there is enough demand for a large format printer. Elegoo does have their orange storm, but essentially this machine is, all, for all intents and purposes, just a scaled up Voron V 2.4. They took the Voron V 2.4 gantry, put it in a 4040 frame, uh, used CNC parts and did some other mods like uh, inverted Z with more gearing and whatnot. But you could just take something that already exists and just kind of modify it to suit your needs if you want to sell kits, or if you're, again, a DIYer who's into cosplay, for example, well, you want a large format machine, but you only want index, for example, because you want to print with a soluble and insoluble material for support. Or another advantage of kit machines is usually they're open source. You have a little bit more control over the machine and how you use it and what you can do for it. You could have built a Voron 2.4 kit from 2020. And today you could upgrade it with an Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder or a Box Turtle Kit to give it MMU or AMS capabilities for multicolor printing. You could put a Stealth Changer multi-tool head system in it. You can modify the firmware, you can modify the tool head, you can put any manner of extruder or hot end in it. It's it's an open platform, it's, it's a kit. You're able to modify it, you're able to make it suit your needs. So going the DIY route, going the open source route, going the kit route, you learn a bit more. You have a little bit more freedom and control over the printer you're getting. You have the ability to customize it to suit your needs. And you kind of learn some stuff along the way and you also have fun building the kit. But that's not for everyone. 
kits aren't for everyone. So let's talk about that. Hello, so I'm gonna use this hand here as an example of why you may not want to use a kit to build a 3D printer and you may just wanna buy one. Well, this is the hand for a one one-tenth scale Gundam uh, that I am currently building. It's gonna be about six feet tall. It's 378 parts. I'm printing it all in PETG plastic. And guess what? I'm using my Prusas to print it. Why? because they're off the shelf machines that just work. Prusas come with really good slicer settings with a lot of common materials, pre-sliced, pre-configured, ready to go. I have multiple different Prusas of different styles, Mark IVs, Core Ones, the Prusa XL here. I'm just gonna be taking random parts, storing them on random printers and hitting slice and go. And having that curated ecosystem where all the machines kind of behave the way you expect them to is really nice to have. I've done projects on my Vorons before. All my Vorons are different. They all have slightly different profiles, different firmware settings, different accelerations, different pressure advance settings. Some print some materials a little bit better than others. Some are a little quirky because they're all DIY machines. I built them all myself and they're all built from different kits with different parts. There's nothing homogenous among them. So if you're looking to outfit a workshop or a print farm or a school with printers, you're probably going to want to just buy something that's a nominal printer, something off the shelf, especially support. For example, over here, we have my ProForge 300 from Maker Tech 3D. This is a tool changer, the same as my Prusa XL. These are both tool changers, but this one was a kit. Now it was a fun printer to build and it does print pretty good. Um, we have a multicolored Benchy here. I believe I printed on this and yeah, it's a fun printer. But the thing is, this was a kit. And right now I'm trying to sort out a problem I'm having with it where I'm having some communication issues with one of the tool heads. So, you know, I can reach out to Maker Tech 3D and we'll, we'll sort it out. But the thing is, the tool head board is built by one company and it's attached to a tool head that's built by a different company and connected by a USB into a USB breakout board that's also another company that talks to a controller board and a main uh, MCU in this printer running uh, Clipper that's also from different manufacturers. There's nothing on this machine that is actually from Maker Tech 3D, except for some of the, the sheet metal frame and a few machined components. All the electronics were from different manufacturers. Um, so if you run into a problem with a kit machine, especially if the company that you got the kit from doesn't exist anymore, or they don't offer service or they don't offer the best service, you're gonna have fun trying to source some of these problems and try and fix them. It's a good learning experience, but if I you know bought the machine because I didn't want a learning experience. I just wanted a tool that makes the thing I wanted to make. Um, with the Prusa Core 1, if I run into an issue with my Prusa Core 1, I just contact Prusa because they're in charge of the entire printer. They they know everything in it. They're, they're the ones who built it. Um, so going with the DIY option, the kit option, if you're looking for something where you don't have to worry about yourself as the main maintainer of the system, it, yeah, that's something you're gonna have to think about. And another thing to think about too is building a kit takes time. If you're outfitting an entire print farm of printers, yeah, saving a couple hundred bucks by going with a Prusa kit might be a sound option if you're just buying one or two machines. But if you're outfitting a farm with 30 machines, that's a lot of time to build a lot of printers. So you might as well just save the time, spend the money, get pre-assembled machines. And pre-assembled machines have come down quite a bit in price. You can buy Centauri Carbons and Flash Forge Adventurers for 300 or less dollars, I believe now, US. I, I know right now the market with tariffs and everything in the US is a complete mess. Up here in Canada, everything's just expensive by default. So we're just used to it. But um, pricing has come down a lot for those machines that can do, you know, what a Voron does essentially. So yeah, it, it's, it's a really good time to just buy a 3D printer if you wanna get into 3D printing. But again, part of the fun, at least for me, is building the printer. So it's up to you. And at the end of the day, that's like the biggest takeaway I can give you is simply, this is gonna be a decision that you need to make. I like building stuff. I like tweaking and modifying stuff. I like having full control over my tools and how I use my tools. I don't like a company updating the software on my tool and telling me I can't use it a certain way anymore. So I prefer kit printers. I prefer open source printers, but 
I'm not everyone. I am not you. I have friends that do cosplay and prop making. They don't want to be spending the time to build a printer, maintain a printer, do upgrades and mods to it. They'd rather just buy a printer that does what it needs to do for them and just set it up and hit print and off they go. I know people that run print farms and for them, printers are consumable. They don't care about maintenance on a printer because they buy a $300 printer, run it until it something goes wrong on it, and then they just get rid of it or they put it in a pile to maybe fix one day or they donate it because for them, uptime is key and the moment a printer's not up anymore, it's replaced because it makes sense for them in their business model. The 3D printer market is a great market because it is such an open market and there are so many different options out there for different users, for different use cases, to fit different needs and fit different people and their wants. So don't be afraid to shop around. Don't be afraid to do your own research. Don't be afraid to sit down and see what you need for your machine and what it needs to do to fit your needs and use cases and vote with your wallet and buy what works best for you. I'm not gonna tell you to go buy anything specific today. Um, if you do wanna help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do, I have some affiliate links in the video description below. Don't forget to like the smash button, ring the bell, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And uh, yeah, I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator. Enjoy the rest of your week, be safe out there, wash your hands, and I will see you in the future. Cheers.